Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is part one of cutaneous photosensitivity diseases. Introduction. Cutaneous erythema develops as a normal response following exposure to ultraviolet radiation and is termed as photosensitivity. So the cutaneous erythema is normal and it develops in almost every individual, but if it develops in a little bit more in uh, proportion, then it is termed as photosensitivity. Abnormal photosensitivity occurs when an individual's cutaneous response to sunlight, which may be ultraviolet radiation or visible radiation, fall outside the range of healthy subjects. So abnormal photosensitivity will be, uh, will be uh, described as um, little uh, more than the normal photosensitivity which a normal individual would suffer when exposed to ultraviolet or visible radiations. Then the abnormal photosensitivity also encomp uh, encompasses abnormal cutaneous reactions to sunlight of abnormal morphology. That is sunlight at different spatial places, like in temperate, like in high altitude, uh, longer uh, wavelengths, etc. So the cutaneous photosensitivity diseases may be classified as the idiopathic or immunological diseases and others. So the idiopathic and immunological diseases include the polymorphic light eruption, juvenile spring eruptions, actinic prurigo, chronic actinic dermatitis, solar urticaria, and hydroa vacciniform. So these six diseases are the primary idiopathic or immunological photosensitivity diseases. However, photosensitivity is also seen in many genophotodermatoses in several metabolic disorders. These are mentioned in their separate texts and drugs or chemical induced photosensitivity, then in several porphyrias, and exogenous systemic or topical drugs or chemicals and photoaggravated skin diseases. The idiopathic or immunological photodermatosis are the commonest due to high prevalence of polymorphic light eruption. So because polymorphic light eruption is, uh, is of high prevalence, that's why all the immunological photodermatosis are of high prevalence. Photoaggravated diseases are relatively common and often hard to distinguish from a specific photodermatosis on clinical grounds, emphasizing the importance of photo testing. So first of the immunological or idiopathic photodermatosis, which is in fact the commonest is polymorphic light eruption. PLE is a recurrent delayed onset abnormal reaction to sunlight or artificial ultraviolet radiation source that resolves without scarring. So all these terms are important. The recurrent delayed onset and abnormal reaction that resolve without scarring. There are several morphological variants, hence it is termed as polymorphic. The diagnosis is usually straightforward and based on history. Management involves photoprotection and require prophylactic, topical or systemic corticosteroid therapy, or if more severe cases, immunosuppressive therapy. The incidence and prevalence. The disease usually starts before 30 years of age and is much commoner in females. PLE has been described amongst all the ethnic backgrounds. The positive reported association of polymorphic light eruption include lupus erythematosus, which includes systemic, subacute, and discoid. Then it is associated with actinic prurigo, with solar urticaria, with photosensitive psoriasis, with hepatitis C, and hypogamma global anemia. Pathophysiology. PLE is believed to be delayed type hypersensitivity response to ultraviolet induced allergens, that is photoallergens. Because of the delayed response, 
the delay because of the delay type hypersensitivity the disease manifests after a delay of sun exposure or ultraviolet radiation exposure this is supported by the presence of t helper cells in the infiltrate and presence of addition molecule expression resembling the contact dermatitis it is not known what causes ple it can be an autoimmune disorder with abnormal delayed hypersensitivity greater exposure to longer wavelengths at higher altitude is important in initiation of this disorder previous greater sunlight exposure followed by more intermittent less intense exposure might predispose to ple development there is evidence that people with polymorphic light eruption there is less ultraviolet radiation suppression then those without ple so in other words patient with ple are more susceptible to ultraviolet radiation induced damages people with ple appear to less prone to skin cancers than would be expected due to sunlight avoidance alone so such people because of their inbuilt sensitivity to sunlight they avoid the sunlight and hence they will be less prone to the skin cancers which are aggravated by sunlight so the polymorphic light eruption is characterized by erythematous papules vesicles and plaques on sun exposed area so you can see the vesicles the papules and coalescing to form plaques histopathology polymorphic light eruption is characterized by a few salient histopathological features one is this one is the sub epidermal edema which this is a sub epidermal edema often associated with sub epidermal or intradermal vesiculation along with moderate to high moderate to severely intense perivascular mononuclear inflammatory infiltrate so in this case the edema is not visible but perivascular lymphohistocytic infiltrate is seen in superficial and mid dermal blood vessels the cells of this infiltrate are mainly cd4 helper cells and later on cd8 suppressor cells and direct immunofluorescence findings are negative in polymorphic light eruption so this is helpful in diagnosing lupus erythematosus from ple in which the lupus band test will be positive but however it is negative in ple genetic modeling of abnormal photosensitivity suggesting of ple in family of patients with ple or actinic prurigo further confirmed a significant inherited component to the disorder environmental factors ultraviolet radiations and occasionally visible light exposure is important in manifestation of polymorphic light eruption contraceptive pill once considered as possibly relevant is not implicated anymore clinical features as little as 10 minute or up to several hours of sunlight occasionally other ultraviolet radiation source exposure will produce an itchy eruption on the exposed site priming phenomena is the need for 2 to 3 days of initial exposure of sunlight before ple develops so this is the initial development of ple and it is called as a priming phenomenon but later on it will not take so such so much time for manifestation of ple often the rash are not noted until the evening or night after the midday sunlight exposure and not until the following day so after the priming phenomena the rash may develop after 12 or 14 hours of sunlight exposure there is however an early onset polymorphic light eruption variant which with the onset as soon as 30 minute after the first exposure and this may cause some diagnostic confusion with solar urticaria with subsequent sunlight avoidance the eruption usually resolves within a few days to two weeks of onset reasons of prolonged rash in polymorphic light eruption unclear history true persistence due to inadequate avoidance measures secondary eczematization particularly in atopics 
and suspicion of associated actinic vitiligo or lupus erythematosus. Presentation. Polymorphic light eruption affects sunlight exposed sites exclusively. The occasional exception to this can be explained by UV transmission through clothing. Sparing of face and dorsal of hand is quite common and presumably due to tolerance induced by repeated perennial UVR exposure. This is akin to hardening phenomena. So although this is, these are the common sites of uh, involvement, but if face and dorsal surfaces of hands are spared, then it is related to the hardening phenomena due to repeated exposures. Facial involvement is more commonly seen in children with PLE. PLE is generally non-scarring unless secondary excoriation is prominent. Exposure sources. This is usually a sunlight. Sunbed ir uh, ir uh, irradiation is also responsible. Welding and fo photocopying equipments are, occasion uh, are occupational irradiation sources that have been implicated. So there are various clinical variants of polymorphic light eruption. The first and foremost is mixed papillovesicular type, then followed by plaque type, then papillar or micropapillar, vesicobullus or EM-like, insect bite-like, or rash without, um, a form without a rash, purpuric or hemorrhagic subtype. PLE is said to be monomorphic within individuals. It looks similar each time it occurs. For example, in one individual, PLE always manifest as papillovesicular lesions. In other, it will always manifest as um, micropapillar or papillar lesions. And it is also possible that polymorphic lesion occur every time the patient is exposed to sunlight. Some individuals have different morphologies on different sites, for example, edematous plaques on the face and papillovesicular eruption on the forearm. So these are different types of uh, PLEs. Mixed papillo, papillovesicular, plaque type, micropapillar, EM-like, purpuric or hemorrhagic type. Differential diagnosis. If suspected, PLE starts almost immediately after sunlight exposure. Then solar urticaria should be excluded. Because solar urticaria is type 1 hypersensitivity and occurs immediately. Usually PLE is delayed, hypersensitivity to occur some delay, after some delay. Cutaneous lupus erythematosus should be excluded if lesions last more than three weeks. Jesner's lymphocytic infiltrate is one of the differentials. Actinic prurigo is distinguished by its typical early age of onset and involvement of dorsal nose and frequently lips and conjunctiva. Occasionally, chronic actinic dermatitis needs to be considered. Disease course and prognosis. Up to 24% have experienced resolution of PLE and 50% to have milder disease. Those with negative provocation test would be more likely to enter remission than those with positive provocation test. A substantial proportion of those with severe polymorphic light eruption require repeated yearly prophylactic phototherapy and after several years experience resolution. It is not known whether this is a spontaneous resolution or result of repeated treatment courses. Investigations, monochromator phototesting. Most patients have normal minimal erythema, erythema thresholds, but moderately reduced thresholds occur to UVA or UVB in about one third of the patient tested. Provocation test. PLE can occasionally be provoked by irradiating a very small area of the skin with a monochromator. In this setting, a papillar response is noted at the threshold of erythema dose. However, to provoke it in most patients, large areas ranging from four to six centimeter square is required. Up to four successive doses are needed daily to reach a 90% positive provocation test in one series of patients. Photo patch testing. This may reveal relevant coexisting contact or photo contact allergies to sun screening agents or other agents. Antibody screening. Anti-nuclear antibody, anti-row and anti la should always be done when there is a typical feature is suspicious of LE. In general, it is acceptable to disregard a low titer ANA 
if it is unaccompanied by positive antero and la antibodies without other clinical pointers towards ele one of the clinical pointer is persistence of rash beyond 3 weeks porphyrin screening is sometimes required to rule out pct and consider in differential diagnosis of patient with vesicobullous ple or erythropoietic protoporphyria and patient with early onset ple type hla type 2 uh, class type 2 type b this is useful for actinic prurigo absence of hla dr4 helps to rule out actinic prurigo histopathology of skin biopsy is usually unnecessary but help in atypical cases then management the management depends upon the disease severity the patient wishes and other factors that influence risk benefit consideration in those patients who are only affected a few times each year such as on holiday photo protection sometimes supplemented by infrequent prophylactic topical or systemic corticosteroid use is usually suffice for those more severely affected who are repeatedly affected at least the spring or summer months one of the second line phototherapy approaches is indicated for those who remain severely affected despite of prophylactic phototherapy and systemic immunosuppression is considered appropriate so the first line therapy for patient of polymorphic light refraction is sun avoidance and photoprotective measures advice of uvb absorbing window films or museum film to car and house windows patient should avoid midday of uh, middle of the day sun that is 11 am to 3 pm and wear appropriate clothing which constitutes of tightly woven fabric broad spectrum high spf sunscreen should be used and applied correctly thickly evenly and frequently second line treatment prophylactic phototherapy or photochemotherapy is the main second line therapy narrow band uvb puva and uva one therapy are all effective course given in spring serves to harden the skin by tanning and epidermal thickening and effects on immune response so if a uh, few therapies are given then the patient survives this uh, the summers easily no treatment is sufficient to allow an unlimited exposure factors to consider are time of year of administration too early in the year may lead to loss of effect so if it is given too early in the year before the spring season then the loss of effect whether to treat whole body or normally exposed site only and how how many exposures are given and the advice given following the exposures following the course so prednisolone tablet taken taken at the first onset of polymorphic light eruption after a holiday type exposure or use of potent topical corticosteroid applied daily from the day before the third day of holiday from uh, from the day before the third day of holiday also appears to be helpful so uh, another second line therapy is to take prednisolone tablet before the onset of ple after a holiday type exposure or topical corticosteroids on sun exposed areas starting a day before going to uh, a holiday where sunlight is supposedly uh, strong and continue it till the third day of holiday even if there is no rash experimental second line systemic therapies beta carotene and s carotene is disappointing controlled trials using anti malarial drugs show minimal benefit omega 3 polyunsaturated fatty acid from fish oil showed some statistically significant effect extract from the topical fern polydium um, polypodium leucotomus which has antioxidant anti inflammatory effect may be of value a randomized control trial suggesting prophylactic application of vitamin d and log can be beneficial third line therapy for those who are not responding to first line and second line measures will go to the third line measure and this include immunosuppressive drugs like azathioprine and cyclosporine for refractory cases so the second disease we are going to discuss today is the juvenile spring eruption this is typically a recurrent blistering eruption affecting the upper pinnas of boys and young men occurring with intense sunlight exposure during spring it is more of a nuisance rather than a severe problem and the relationship between the condition and sunlight is quite clear 
Although it has been reported in female, it is typically condition of males. This is due to difference in the hair styles between male and female cats. It has mainly been reported among those of European ancestry. Pathophysiology of condition is similar to polymorphic light eruption. Predisposing factor, more common in male with short hairs and prominent ears. Environmental factors, juvenile springtime eruption seems to be more common in countries with typically separate seasons rather than those with similar weather throughout the year. Pathology, a dermal perivascular mononuclear cell infiltrate is seen in the biopsies. Later epidermal ulceration and acanthosis is also seen. So typical history is that of blisters, sometimes coalescing, but usually unilocular on the upper pinna, often occurring after a few days of sunlight exposure. Pruritus and papules are also seen, sometimes recurring over a few years, does appear to dissolve spontaneously. Differential diagnosis include polymorphic light eruption, erythema multiformi, erythropoietic protoporphyria, hydroa vacciniformi, and bullocelli. There is no complication and comorbidity is described. Investigation. Photo testing is usually not undertaken because it's a clinical diagnosis, but if it is monochromatic response are typically normal, an iterative UVA provocation test may be positive. Management. Advice on its benign nature and expected spontaneous resolution can be given. Where possible, advice to grow hairs long enough to cover the upper pinna is usually what is required. For treatment of blisters, uh, we do it symptomatically. If there is pruritus, we can give antihistamine and topical corticosteroids. The third disease and the last disease we are going to discuss today is the actinic prurigo. Actinic prurigo is a distinct photodermatosis with a perennial eruption that is uh, um, occurring throughout the year, but typically worse in summer. And it is characterized by itchy papules, vesicles, persistent eroded nodules, and scarring. There is involvement of dorsal nose and frequent chelitis and conjunctivitis. That is important. Abnormal photosensitivity, UVA and UVB, is often seen, but generally gradually improves. So the normal sunlight is not damaging in actinic prurigo, and it is mainly UVA and UVB. Classical actinic prurigo is clinically distinct, but there is some overlap in features with polymorphic light eruption. And majority of actinic prurigo patients have HLA DR4 tissue type. Incidence and prevalence. Actinic prurigo ranges from three to per 100,000 in Scotland and is occur in most part of the world. Most common actinic prurigo starts in childhood and is commoner in female, more common among those of uh, Amer uh, Amerindian ancestry. And actinic prurigo is more frequent in population which are living at high altitudes. Pathophysiology, ultraviolet radiation exposure is important in actinic prurigo and action spectrum from abnormal force sensitivity is usually in the range of UVB and UVA wavelength, really UVA only. Actinic prurigo and polymorphic light eruption share patho mechanisms with some consideration, considering AP as a persistent form of polymorphic light eruption in those who are generally genetically susceptible. Underlying mechanism is again a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. In pathology, a dermal perivascular mononuclear infiltrate is seen. Later on, epidermal ulceration, acanthosis, and fibrosis may occur. Actinic prurigo most commonly start in childhood, although late onset vari variations variants are reported. Most affected people are aware of the distinct flare related to ultraviolet radiation exposure, usually from sunlight. It is commonly very itchy with early pink papule or small nodules and plaques, and plaques, you can see the plaques, and sometimes vesicles which become rapidly excoriated and crusted and scabbed. So excoriation because of intense pruritus, not infrequently associated with eczematization and subsequent scarring. The scarring was not a feature of PLE and it is a feature of actinic prurigo due to uh, excoriation. Then ocular symptoms and uh, soreness and of the lip is common. Chelitis and conjunctivitis occur 
there may be hypo and hyperpigmentation in resolving lesions and scars. Differential diagnosis, severe polymorphic light eruption, especially in patients with atopic eczema, widespread and florid insect bite reactions, photoaggravated atopic eczema and nodular pruritus. See, these all are differential diagnosis. Complications and comorbidity, secondary infection with staph aureus and sometimes streptococcus, disease course and prognosis. It usually spontaneously improves and may resolve by teenage years or early adulthood. Persistence of disease in adult life can also occasionally occur. Investigations. Monochromator photo testing is important, showing some abnormal photosensitivity in most cases. Alternative UVA provocation testing can usually provoke an abnormal papillary response. Abnormal photosensitivity may also be evident on narrow band UVB minimum erythema dose testing on exposure to compact fluorescent lamps. So photo provocative tests are all positive using UVA or UVB sources. HLA typing is not diagnostic test for AP, but helpful in cases of doubt. To help exclude other diseases, mimicking actinic prigo, anti-nuclear ENA uh, testing is done and porphyria biochemical screening is indicated. Management. Once the diagnosis is established, initial treatment consists of advice on sun avoidance measures, behavioral advice, clothing, hats, sunscreen, window films, and use of potent or very potent topical corticosteroids. Spring time, narrow band UVB or Buva therapy may be required, usually. Only photo-exposed sites are need to be treated. So for hardening effects, application of potent topical steroids to treated areas immediately after such exposure reduces the risk of disease flare. Systemic treatment. Anti-malarious beta-carotene is sometimes tried but are of uncertain value. Thalidomide may be more useful, but uh, consideration of female in pregnancy years must be considered. Pentoxyphylene has an anti-tumor necrotic factor alpha effects and may be worth considering in the treatment of actinic pruritus. So we are going to discuss this and other diseases in the next lecture. So this, that is all for today. And I hope these lectures have, this lecture has cleared your uh, doubts and concepts about the diseases which I have already talked about. So see you next time with the continuation of the same topic. So take care and goodbye.